Hey, this is Dennis from Swedish hardcore punk band Refused. We're here at Rockabilia and uh, just, yeah, watch us fucking roll. <laughs> We thought we uh, wanted to sort of like um, attack the world this time around. <laughs> I mean, really, we spent a lot of time honing in and just making the lyrics as like simple and uh, direct and just like righteously angry as possible. I think, I think all good art in its sense should reflect the times we live in. And we live in violent, angry times, and we want to kind of reflect that in the music and sort of, uh, you know, so so people can see what type of world we live in. A lot of people are, are uh, kind of sheltered off to the reality, and, and, you know, we wanted to deliver like a gut punch or a record, and then you go on tour and you, you want to pick bands that make sense to go on tour with, and, and uh, Race Trader, they're like old friends of ours since the 90s, and Youth Curl, just angry, amazing music, and it made sense with the package to have this awesome tour of, of really, really heavy and powerful bands, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Fun. It's great. It wasn't that long ago when it felt like if you talked about like economical structures and criticizing like neoliberalism and late era capitalism that people were sort of like so sort of just like sort of like smile you know like just like yeah man of course you're gonna look at capitalism sure you know they were just like amused but now it seems like a much wider spot where people are sort of like yeah this is not working it's yeah. not really like people are actually just like taken us seriously in that sense, yeah. uh, which is uh, frightening. I sort of preferred it when we were laughing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because then I could entertain the notion that maybe I'm wrong, maybe <laughs> it's going to be fine. But now it's just like, yeah, 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 we're, we're getting it's yeah. not good. And, and it's interesting because in the 90s when we were a band, uh, we were so much part of like a confined scene where everybody had kind of similar ideas, but then Refuse became like this weird crossover band that we just, way more people than the initial scene. Right. And, and as David said, when we first came back and, and we started playing shows and we talked about politics, you could see a lot of people doing the S David said, like, yeah, but now it's like, it resonates with people in a totally different way because the realities of, of, of the economical system they have are really, I mean, people can feel it. Like people can feel like, like the divide between, you know, the, the rich and the poor. They can feel the divide amongst each other, which is a big thing, like, like the fact that uh, the one percent of the capital, you know, they benefit from us arguing over petty things, and and people can feel like mental illness is a huge thing amongst young people because everything's stacked up against them. So I think a lot of people, the things we talk about today, resonate with people in a way they didn't do twenty years yeah. ago. And it's yeah. a, even yeah. from the inside, it sort of felt like a niche thing. Yeah, but it was a niche thing that we'd grown up with and that we loved in other bands, uh, like that came in the Clash and Fugazi and all those bands. Yeah. But now it doesn't feel like a new state. Yeah. Now I feel, I mean, like it's sort of like, we're not that different from like John Oliver on TV or something. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it is good that you can resonate with people like that, but it's, 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 it's scary when it's like, your radical, insane ideas. People are like, yes, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a bit mind boggling. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's, it was an yeah. element of when we started out from the, you know, from Sweden, from the far north of Sweden, it's a very organized, nice place. Everyone is taken care of. Everyone, everyone has like has like health insurance, you know, like all that stuff. Like when we were teenage, we were just angry, so we would just like sort of copy the mentality of certain records that we liked and just. But we weren't. There was really not that much to be angry about where we were at. No. But, <laughs> so in a sense, it's like it's more relevant than authentic. Like this, like 
yeah. this mission that we're on now than it was back then. I think also, I mean, as you're old, you get more focused. When you're young, you're angry at everything, and you're angry at stuff that maybe didn't really, we didn't yeah. need to be angry at a lot of stuff we were angry at, but now it's like, you're older, you're more focused on, on, on who, you, who you real enemies are. <laughs> you know, it just hit me like, we'd write like an angry song about like uh, US imperialist attitudes uh, in foreign policy, but really I was just angry at my Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It does feel like something's gonna break. Might as well be our planet and, and everything we believe in might break. Uh, but also, I mean, the other possibility is that uh, the, the, the economic, culture, social system that is set up, that might break. I mean, we never know. I mean, we are sliding. We're, we, are, yeah. we are in mid-slide yeah. down a very steep hill towards an unpleasant future. Yeah. And, and it's uh, not gonna break suddenly, it has broken. Yeah, I think so too. And I and I think it's like it some is some people are feeling it more. Yeah. But and and, and I think it's like the Roman Empire. There were like there's like a hundred years of the Roman Empire where it was like definitely on the decline, but they're still like, no, we're still the Roman Empire. This is still awesome. And then like hundred years later it's completely gone. I mean I think we are in that decline right now. We're we're in we're in something that that needs to change, and I mean, what that will be, and how that how that future will look, we don't really know. I mean, if we would figure that out, we would not be here trying to steal a black flag T-shirt. We'd be at the fucking Nobel Peace Prize dinner, you know, <laughs> getting awards. So I mean, we're just trying to we're just trying to figure out like how to maneuver in this life, and then and throw our ideas out there, and then hopefully someone way smarter and way more talented than us can pick that up and be like this maybe this is a way future for the future or this is a way forward so you know but but yeah we live in really strange times really polarized and like the planet's going to hell and you know we have a democratic system that's obviously not functioning at all so there, there's a lot of aspects of this world today that's uh, quite frightening actually yeah It's strange that it happened to us. I mean, you know, that's weird for you as a person, but that kind of thing tends to happen posthumously. There's so many records. I mean, we love a lot of bands that we care about at the time. But um, I don't know, it's just, I mean, if we, it was the fact that we were such a small band and made like a record that sort of stood out. And we were on a small Swedish indie label, and, you know, and just didn't, we just, we were at the on our last legs, like we couldn't keep it together enough to see it, like find its audience. So it's, it's so it's sort of a sad thing because <laughs> we just broke up, and then people found it. and They were like so excited, and of course the fact that we broke up helped the mythology of the thing. Yeah, but it's really like um, yeah, it's really weird how many people like that, right? It's interesting because. I mean, we play music our entire lives, and, and not only with Refuse, but all other projects and all other records we put out. And all our friends and musicians, and we know all these musicians, you know. And most of the time, you play music and you, 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 you're a blip on the radar, and that's it, you know. Like, for a moment in time, people care about you, and then that's gone. Which is kind of the nature of music. I mean, then a couple of select nerds are like, oh, you remember that record, you know. But, to be in a band, or to be in a band, where you put out record, we recorded it 23 years ago, and we're still talking about it. And uh, 
I'm sure we'll meet up in 20 years, we'll still talk about it. But it it's an amazing thing. It's like something that every, I think everyone that, that's ever been in a band, that's their dream, like to have that legacy. It can be mildly frustrating when you put out other records and, and you always have to go up against that standard. Like you'll put out a record with some other band and people are like, oh, it's not shaped punk. You're like, no, it's another band. But it is also a fucking privilege to be part of something that uh, stood the test of time. Because you know? yeah. a lot of the bands you that we dance, played with, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta dance with the one that brought you. Yeah. You know, to... So it, it, it's pretty amazing. And I mean, every night, sometimes people ask me like, Oh, do you ever get tired of playing new noise live? I'm like, never, never. The reaction we get every night, it's amazing. It's yeah. like, how can you ever get tired of that? So it, it is a beautiful thing. I mean, I remember when we broke up and we both try to like continue on with life and, and Refuse became a big band. Cause it's a weird thing. Cause most people like they're in a band and they're in the band when the band becomes big, but we were not. We were like, we were completely outside and we just saw Refuse become a big band. We're like, oh, that's super weird. It was like an albatross. It was something that was like, you try to play a show and then someone comes up like, I love Refused. And you're like, well, we broke up like two years ago. And, and for the first couple of years, I, it was extremely annoying because you were so close to it. And then one day you wake up and you're like, shit, we made a record that, that's fucking, you know, in, in 20 years, we'll still be talking about that record. That's very few people get that. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah, And it's why we're here today. I mean, we're not gonna lie, it's why, New Noise and that record is why we're still a band, you know? I mean, you know, if, if it wasn't for that record, we wouldn't have done the Coachella reunion. I mean, and that record enabled us to do freedom and to do war music and to continue to tour and to be bad. And it's a, it's a, it's just a damn privilege, you know? This is a Rockabilia exclusive, and it's a, a typical pose of me screaming. Yeah. That's kind of how I, I spent most of my, like an hour and 15 minutes every day of my life in that pose. So it's a beautiful shirt, by the way. Fucking great. Cool. Buy it. Steal it. <laughs> <laughs>